And I, I am fascinated by this SPAC, uh, SPAC situation. And I'm fascinated that, you know, you come on and say effectively that, that a lot of these things are going to go bust. Obviously, you're in the business of promoting your own, your own SPACs uh, right now. But when you look at the investor base for the SPAC market right now, do you look at it as a, as a retail market? Do you look at it as the big uh, institution, the smart money actually buying into the SPACs? And not and let's, when I say smart money, there's a lot of smart money buying into the original SPAC, and then they're, they're levering that, and then they're getting out. I'm talking about uh, whether you believe that there are real investors that are backing uh, the actual um, after the sponsor buys uh, and makes an acquisition at these valuations. Um. The, uh, the IPOs are, are bought by our last IPO, Spitfire, second SPAC, had 150 different accounts, and um, it was a billion no, no. five or six of demand. So I, those are real, IP, those are real IPO, investors. Oh, I think, I think Barry, the follow-ons— Those investors, yeah. those investors are— Barry, just so we're clear, those in, the investors who are buying at the IPO are real investors who are levering their money. It's a financial engineering play with an option on the, uh, on the other end. What I'm asking is a different question. When it comes to the actual acquisition component, when you actually buy the company and you look at both the pipes that are involved and you look at who is then buying on the other side, who's effectively think, getting left with I, the, I, you're holding the bag, I'll, I'll who speak is to, that? I'll, I'll speak to our, our, um, the one we've completed. Or almost completed, and there are real investors in there. But I'm sure there's tons of of uh, day traders and kids, and you know you can see the momentum. What goes up goes up more, and some of these stocks have gone linear straight up with no. I mean, I I can't I can't. I'm just watching and, and astonished. You know, companies that I passed on for five billion trading at twenty billion dollar market caps with one percent gross margins and completely undefendable businesses <laughs> with new competitors taking their lunch. So people are buying names, and I, I don't know who it is. I mean, I, and I don't think you should assume that all the original investors are getting out. In our case, I don't think many of them have gotten out. I think it's um, there are companies that are trading like Bitcoin. They're just going up and up and up, and right. they, they read about it on on some social media platform, or you know, and they just keep buying it. And the kids, it's like, like I, so I have housekeepers in my hotels trading stocks in the evening. You know, Barry, <laughs> they're buying warrants. Think they they think it's the greatest thing ever. Do you think there's something wrong then with the market? Do you think there's something wrong with the disclosures, right? You know, in an IPO, you can't yeah. you can't have forward-looking projections. In in this kind of market, you can. Should the sponsors themselves be be held responsible? As we know, we, we talked a lot about fees involved in SPACs. The, yeah. spo- the reason so many big name sponsors are involved in this is because it is so lucrative for them, and it is truly a heads uh, you know heads you win, tails you win situation if you're a sponsor. In most cases, uh, look, I, I, I think, you know, they could have a sticker on it, like a pack of cigarettes like this isn't for children. You know, you should know what you're doing and uh, and find, you know, finding real companies. But, Andrew, you pick on SPACs, pick on IPOs, too. There are shitty companies. Oh, I shouldn't say that bad companies that are going public and quadrupling. And, you know, it's funny because I'll talk to the VCs and they'll say, oh, the company isn't worth that. They go public and the stock goes up sixfold in, in two months. So it's not a SPAC. It's the same thing across the across the market. The issue with the SPAC is you're right about the inherent conflict. There is there is there is a group of people, I'd say, in, in the in the SPAC universe of sponsors that really don't care what they're paying for a company. Because and so the guy wants two billion, they say, I'll, I'll pay you three billion. And then they they kind of go on TV, sometimes on your show, and just promote the hell out of their stocks. And that is like a bucket shop operator. I mean, that is and I don't know what the what the SEC wants to do about it. But, you know, I think that, that you have to be careful about what you say in public. I mean, I have a big business. I have a reputation to protect. You know, I, I'm I'm not here. I don't I'm, I've done fine in life. I don't have to, like, do this. I, I think it's interesting and diversification for me. And these are really interesting people and giving them capital is to grow a business is no different than a PE firm buying it. And, and taking 20% of the profits. It's just, a, it's a, it's a very, it's a legitimate market, but it's, it's actually, you know, the, the Wall Street should be a little more discriminating on who they back to do a sponsor. But at this point, the investors don't care. So, you know, that you, you can, my, 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 I have a very accomplished house manager. I'm sure he could do a SPAC too today. So, yeah, Andrew, you should do a SPAC. When's your SPAC coming out? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm working on it right now. Give me till nine o'clock. You, Becky, morning. and Joe, I'll, I'll do it with you. <laughs> the, the the squawk spack. The squawk spack. The squawk spack. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.